Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be uh, hearing from Kyle Maurer. His talk is what I learned from interviewing 200 plus people in WordPress. Uh, Kyle works for Sandhills Development, which is a WordPress plugin company with a variety of popular products, including easy digital downloads, which Kyle spends most of his time working on. Kyle strongly believes that humans are not meant to live in bubbles. He's grateful that he has found a profession and an employer which permit him a lifestyle filled with freedoms, including the ability to travel frequently and explore new pursuits. Assumption, challenging, and horizon broadening <coughs> are among Kyle's favorite pastimes. The only conspiracy theory Kyle really and truly believes in is that printers are actually artificially intelligent, malevolent machines designed to crush our spirits. Please give a warm welcome to Kyle. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. All right, good. Really excited to be with you. About four and a half years ago, I was getting involved in the WordPress community just a little bit more. I started attending WordCamps, speaking at meetups, been speaking at some WordCamps, and <coughs> publishing some plugins that I had made, and, and really starting to invest in this community I had discovered. And, and I wanted to go a little deeper and do a little more. And one day, I saw someone post on Google Plus of all places. You guys ever, ever heard of that? You remember Google Plus? Yeah, it, it was a thing for a little while. And so somebody posted there that they were thinking about starting a WordPress show, and would anybody want to join them? And I thought this would be perfect. So I responded, and I joined, and for the next couple of years, I co-hosted the WP Roundtable show, uh, along with a revolving door of co-hosts. I was the only person who really stuck around in that, uh, in that period. And after a couple of years, the last co-host stopped showing up. And so for the two or three years since then, I've just been hosting the show on my own. And it's a, basically a get to know the community type show. That's what I've made it into. I have never repeated a guest. I've interviewed a whole lot of people, including some people who are in this room right now, as a matter of fact. And it's been a very special experience. And somehow in that time, I've had an opportunity to talk one on one with a whole lot of fascinating people in this WordPress space. And, and get to learn things from them and about them. And I was hoping that I could just take this opportunity to share some of my reflections on this experience with all of you. And I want to break those reflections into these three categories. I learned a couple of things about just being generally the people who are successful and have found success in this industry. Uh, a lot of things that they have explicitly told me or that I, I have interpreted from their experiences and stories. I've learned a lot of things about uh, the makeup of this community, the people that it consists of, and along the way I also learned a few things about myself and managing to maintain this, uh, this sign project of sorts, which is where I want to start briefly and just talk about a couple of things that I learned uh, about managing a side project and, and, and learning to engage this community a little bit better. So, first off, uh, the other day, I went into my favorite coffee shop and the barista greeted me and said, good morning, Kyle, the usual. And this was, uh, no, this was me. Um, because I, I thought this was a big moment. Like, I've, I've done it, achievement unlocked. I successfully went one place enough times uh, and ordered the same thing that someone asked me if I wanted the usual. And uh, that was really special uh, because it's a good feeling, right? You know, you know what I'm talking about? That, that familiarity, which we all love. We all want to go places that feel like we're in cheers all of the time. And unfortunately, much more often, instead of cheers, wherever we go, we feel more like uh, the first day of a new school, freshman year, uh, you guys should know what I'm talking about, I think. Probably some of you feel like that right now if you're here at your first work camp. Uh, conferences are a great example of, of that feeling where uh, at the same time you're, you're, you're thinking to yourself, uh, please, someone notice me, but also, please, I hope no one notices me. Uh, that, that, that feeling of being a stranger. Uh, so I'm very familiar with that. 
Uh, but somehow, uh, well, it reminds me a lot of uh, the, the Council of Elrond, you know, where, where Frodo is, is there, like a hobbit of all creatures. It's, it's a beautiful scene that just paints the picture to me, like how we all feel at events like this. Uh, where a hobbit, a hobbit of all creatures, is, is sitting next to like dwarves and, and living legends, talking about things that he doesn't understand at all, way above his head. Uh, super cool scene. That, that's how we feel. Uh, somehow, I, through a lot of persistence, I was able to largely overcome this feeling, this sense of imposter syndrome, like everything's over my head and, and everybody else knows more than I do. Uh, and that was pretty hard, but a lot of it had to do with me learning uh, to find my own place and appreciating the fact that my place isn't the same as anybody else's place. I, I learned over the time that I'm not the charismatic life of the party kind of person who can walk in and just make friends with everyone, uh, like other people that I know. Uh, but I am capable of running this this one-on-one -on -one conversation show and, and getting to talk to people uh, and have conversations in this format. I can do that. And so that's my experience finding uh, where I am able to fit in and do something that works for me. Another thing that I found to be really effective was um, scheduling with guests. Uh, scheduling this show uh, really forced me to honor the commitment more than any other side project. And the truth is, I've had a lot of side projects. I've had like a like, stupid number of side projects that I've tried over the years. But this is one that somehow, against the odds, I was able to stick to for multiple years. And I'm still doing it. And I think the reason is, when I schedule months in advance an appointment to record the show live with the guests, it's really awkward for me to bail on that and wake up one day and just say I'm not in the mood or I'm too busy. And so somehow, I keep doing it. And I think this has taught me a little bit about strategically tricking myself into being forced to honor a commitment and not just trying to fit things in when they're convenient. Uh, I also have learned a lot about the importance of quality, but balancing that with the importance of shipping. And I think that at the end, in the end of the day, uh, perfectionism is a real danger and that a lot of us are susceptible to. And I'm no exception, but I have learned, looking back, there were a lot of times where I didn't, I didn't put in that much effort, but I'm glad I released stuff anyways. I'm glad I put it out there. I, I look at a lot of the things that I've created and say, man, I could have done that so much better. But I have now learned to be at peace with the fact that at least I released it. At least I published this content, or at least I did it, as opposed to not because it wasn't good enough. That would have been much greater regret for us sitting in that situation right now. Those are just a few of the things that uh, I took away, but one of the, one of the biggest big picture of things is just comparing the difference between what I expected to get or hoped to get and what I actually did from this experience. And I think, I think this is important to reflect on just a little bit. It was, it was a show that we were going to release to the world and, and maybe a lot of people would watch this and it would become popular. There were other shows that we thought were really cool. We're going to be the next such and such. And it's, it's going to be neat. You know, this is going to catapult us to relevance in this community. Well, not really, it didn't. Uh, but I'm not bummed about that even at all. Because I got, in the end, some things that are better, that are better than that. That are better than just a lot of views on our videos and downloads on our, on our feed. I got really valuable relationships with people. I was able to approach so many people in the community and say, you mind just like talking to me for a little while? And I've made a lot of friends in this process. I've got a lot of really great advice from the best minds in the industry uh, to very valuable contacts. And, and it's just been really fun to hear the stories of all the fascinating people in this community. It's given me such a greater appreciation for the diversity uh, of this group and the, the varied backgrounds that everyone has. That's been really fun uh, to experience. Now, I want to I talk a little bit about some of my reflections on the makeup of this community, which I should preface by saying, first and foremost, that 
The makeup of this group, the people that I have interviewed, reflects my network. And my network reflects me. And I fit a profile. I'm a, I'm a, a, like a, a white 30-something male from middle America in the Midwest and from Michigan. And my network kind of reflects that profile. A lot of context in my geographical region and a lot of people who fit a similar profile to me, like attending the same types of events and going to the same types of parties and interested in the same topics. And so my network is generally lacking in the diversity that maybe it could have, though it's something I work on. But even so, I do think there are some uh, useful observations to make from this network. And it is a large network, but compared to the global community, it's quite small. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna just look take it for what it's worth. Uh, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the age of the WordPress industry. Uh, so this this market is still young. The WordPress space has not been around for a, a really long time. There are a lot of a lot of ways, uh, a lot of symptoms, a lot of ways that we can uh, read into this. Like you know, for example. Uh, a large percentage of the people in this industry are still are self-employed. There are a huge number of very small micro businesses making up this industry still. And this is gradually changing over time. Almost every industry follows the same trajectory. As it is when it is a very young industry, every single one is highly fragmented. And that means like all, all the players are small. And many of them are doing essentially the same thing as each other. A lot of different small players. Gradually, as the market begins to grow and mature, you see some bigger players begin to grow. And then it continues to go in that trajectory where uh, the market itself becomes more consolidated. So if you were to think of like very old, extremely well-established industries, you will see them as being very different pies than this where like the old established industries like the auto industry or the banking industry would see virtually no self-employment and all employment. That's a very established uh, industry with a, only a handful of players. And it's extremely difficult for new players to enter the market uh, because the established players are so uh, entrenched and have so many more resources. WordPress is still young but is maturing. So we are starting to see a lot of the companies in this space begin to grow, and we're seeing companies that have hundreds, and very soon we'll see companies that have thousands of employees. And gradually, as each year just goes by, it's a little more difficult for new, brand new, small players to come in and like really disrupt things and offer something that hasn't been done. That becomes a little more difficult as time goes by. We see companies begin to acquire smaller businesses and merge, uh, and small players who can't compete go out of business, and before you know it, there are few, fewer businesses in the market. And this is something that I've observed after you know, getting to know a lot of the people in this industry and watching them change jobs and so forth. Um, there's definitely still a significant gender gap. There is in all sectors of tech. Uh, WordPress is no exception. I have been repeatedly told by people, by uh, women that I've talked to on the show, it's for them to tell me and not, not for me really to relay, but I've just been told that, that uh, anecdotally that like, WordPress is, is pretty good compared to a lot of other uh, tech sectors. And that's really all I have to say about that. But this is the makeup of the guests that I've had my show, on my show. And I've, I've done, I've, I've worked pretty hard to diversify this as much as I can. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's really the makeup. Um, the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics said that last year the uh, national turnover rate was about 18%. Like 18% of people like in any sector uh, ended up changing jobs in a year. And so uh, it wasn't too surprising to me that in our space there's a much higher number, like almost twice as many. Um, but I think that that it reflects uh, the makeup of uh, the type of industry it is, is technology, and uh, a, a little bit dominated by younger people 
in, in the early stages or middle stages of their career. And let's get a profile of people who do change jobs a little more frequently. Um, and also, the market is a little bit volatile still, and a lot of changes are occurring. So we're seeing more and more like business acquisitions every year. Uh, so a lot of people are like essentially changing their employers um, for reasons like that. Uh, and there's definitely uh, a serious age gap. Now this this is a little bit interesting, but there's some stuff to stuff to cover here. Um, overwhelming majority of the people that I have interacted with uh, interviewing um, are in their 30s for sure, uh, and pretty small numbers in some of the other age groups. I think this is for a couple reasons. Uh, one is it is a reflection of my network and the types of places I go and things that I do and the people that I then meet. Uh, so a lot of the types of events that I attend and a lot of the types of after parties that I frequent and a lot of the introductions that get made to me are people fitting, ending up fitting a similar profile to myself, like someone in their 30s and doing similar things, going on similar activities. Um, so it's not surprising that I, uh, my network is predominantly uh, people in my age group. But also, like people who attend conferences is another factor as well, because I have found that people kind of in this age group are the, the group most able to attend events frequently. Like, Still, they are not in their 20s or teens, they're old enough to have the means to travel a little bit and actually go do things. Uh, they're a little bit established in their careers maybe, but not quite so anchored down as people a little bit older who find it more difficult to get away and travel to events. So this is an age group that is most well represented at conferences just because they're most able to go and enthusiastic about going. Uh, so this, I say that to uh, convey that this is not really a reflection of the global WordPress industry, just of the makeup of people that I encounter mostly at events, because I almost never invite a guest on my show that I haven't met in person. That's quite uncommon. I usually form relationships before uh, conducting an interview with somebody. But at the same time, I do think that this pie is, would be similarly reflected in the makeup of uh, a lot of the you know, like established players in this industry. And, and that is for a couple reasons. But one, the WordPress thing itself is a little bit too new to be really uh, infiltrating more established uh, markets and, uh, and industries. Uh, because it's 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 pretty, it's decently well established, but it is still a fairly new and evolving technology. It hasn't been around for decades, and so like enterprise level businesses and the corporate world is not even paying any attention to WordPress hardly at all. But it's also old in the sense that it's not the hot new thing that the kids are doing. WordPress is, uh, has been around for a while, and there are newer. Uh, more attractive and exciting technologies popping up more recently. And so it doesn't surprise me that um, it, the age groups are not well represented uh, in like the younger generation, younger than myself, and the older generation. It's kind of like our generation who was young, uh, all of these people in their 30s were in their 20s when they discovered WordPress, and it was like this new exploding thing. And then it was like a fertile market where the demand was so much higher than the supply for services and products. And if you made something that was even a piece of junk, people would buy it. Uh, that was an exciting time to be getting into WordPress and riding that wave. And a lot of the people right now, running the successful brands in WordPress that you recognize, uh, came in at the right time. Were like in their 20s, experimenting with new stuff, writing a blog, figured out how to make a plugin, and boom. Uh, the next thing you know, they've got a business on their hands they didn't expect. It's a common story that I encountered. Uh, also, not too surprising, the, the, the global community is huge. 
the US does not make up a majority of the WordPress community at all, but the other non-US communities are not very well represented, both in my own personal network, unfortunately, but also, I would argue, in the uh, WordPress community overall. The US is heavily emphasized and gets really kind of all the, all the attention, you know. A lot of those other communities are big, are thriving, but really do not get a whole lot of recognition. It's something that I want to work on personally in my own small way, and it's something that I think that we, the whole WordPress community, can do better. Uh, I'm trying to do my best to, this was fun to map all the people. I just, I just love the fact that I, I'm developing a network of people like all over the place, and anywhere I go, uh, every one of these blue pins represents like somebody that I would probably hit up and say, hey, let's hang out, I'm in your town, virtually everywhere in the country. That's, that's really fun for me. Uh, but I'm, I'm working my way around. This would be surprising that most of the people are like kind of centered around Michigan that I was able to communicate with. Now, just a few things that I, uh, I took away pretty frequently uh, as I look back, because I, I, I spent a lot of time just thinking about what I heard a lot from the people that I've interviewed. Uh, and, and one of the things that I heard over and over was how they got into this by accident. Does anybody feel this way? Like I use WordPress and I like kind of got into this by accident. Yeah, if you had been, you, you probably do feel that way. Uh, because it's not like established and old enough that anybody was getting into it to a delib deliberately or, or planning to dive into this. Uh, that could be happening now. It's conceivable that there are people right now uh, like figuring things out and saying, you know, that, that WordPress market looks really exciting. I want to deliberately pursue that, learn the skills necessary. That's possible, but it wasn't ever before, at least especially for the people who've been doing it professionally for a while. Um, I, the majority of the people that I talked to have some college experience, uh, but a lot of them are completely unrelated. Uh, and many people that I interviewed had very unrelated careers, so it was a very recurring theme that I would talk to somebody, ask them their story, and they're succeeding in WordPress right now, running an agency or a theme business or something like that. And they're like, well, I used to be a, an airplane pilot or a, or a firefighter, or I was in the military, or all these different things. Um, and then somehow, I don't know, everybody just has a different story. Like, accidentally just stumbled upon this technology, found it easy and fun, and, uh, and before you know it, they were making websites for their, uh, their niece's business and the bakery down the street. Um, I heard kind of commonly that uh, a lot, especially, especially the people who have been doing this a long time, a lot of people, when I ask, like, oh, so what events are you going to? Oh, well, I'm kind of like easing back on the travel for a little while. And this I interpreted uh, often for a couple reasons. Uh, one, a lot of people that I talked to have been doing this a long time. And when WordPress was kind of exploding in like the 2009, 10, 11, 12 years, it was really blowing up, then like WordCamps were kind of new and popping up all over the place. And a lot of these brand new businesses were finding unprecedented success and growing. And a lot of people were just like diving in and going to every WordCamp they could and just like contributing to the WordPress project and just on fire with it. And kind of went a little hot, too hot, too fast uh, and got burned out for a while. So I know a lot of people who that has been their experience. Now like there are WordCamps every single weekend uh, and it's just overload. Um, but also, I think it reflects kind of the age group as well, where a, a lot of the people who, like in 2010, were going to every WordCamp, now are like in their late 30s and uh, have kids and a home and, and find it much more difficult to get out and uh, attend every event that they'd like to. Um, virtually everyone was self-taught. There's almost no one that I talked to. It was very rare to hear that I, I studied you know, web design and development in college, nobody said that. Everybody learned this kind of on their own, learning tutorials and whatnot online, uh, building GeoCities sites and, and learning HTML within the MySpace days and so on. And this should be something for you to reflect on if you're not uh, someone who's frequented a lot of WordCamps, maybe if this is your first time. I heard over and over again, a lot of 
of people said something to the effect of uh, their first WordCamp being a big turning point. That was a very special moment that changed the trajectory of their careers. Uh, that's something to reflect on a little bit, like what happened for them, the people that they met, uh, their eyes were opened to how welcoming and supportive and huge this community actually is, and the fact that whatever problems you're going through, there are other people here going through the same problems. Uh, that is really important for a lot of people. Now, let's dive into just a little bit about the valuable lessons I've taken away from uh, the stories of the people who were really successful that, that I interpret as having been successful, like started something that is a sustainable business, went from nothing to growing something that's big, that's well recognized in the industry, like those success stories. What did they have in common? Uh, let's start with what they said, what I heard over and over from them when I said, you know, like, how did you get here? How did you pull this off? Managed to build something from nothing that, that really works, that people pay you for. Uh, people said over and over and over, specialization, this is a broken record uh, advice that I've heard so much. Don't be a jack of all trades. Generalists are really hard to market. If you want to be able to charge a lot of money, if you want to really be uh, less vulnerable to disruptions in the market and have job security, the way to do it is to be super good at something. Just provide an exceptional thing that's narrow. Uh, a lot of people said that. Uh, they heard over and over that raising your prices is super important and that all of us charge too little uh, with almost no exception. And that's kind of a problem that the WordPress uh, economy has faced for years, that almost everything is like underpriced and a lot of professionals compare to like non-WordPress spaces where like if you were to go and pay for this plugin in like the SharePoint or Magento space, it would be so much more money, so much more. But in WordPress, it's $19. Uh, that's ridiculous. And a whole lot of de professional developers will say like, I could get paid so much more if I'm working in like non-WordPress. So why would, I, why would I work in WordPress where people are just not willing to pay very much money? Uh, it's, it's plagued the WordPress space for years, and we're still kind of struggling with that. Uh, uh, like I said before, you know, uh, perfectionism is dangerous, and a lot of the people that I heard uh, who have been successful said repeatedly that it's just important to release stuff and not just iterate indefinitely until someday it's perfect and ready to go. By that time, it's way too late. Way too late. Uh, knowing when to give up is an important lesson that I learned from just so many people have moved on from things when it was time. And that's one of the characteristics I have observed from the, the people that I think are the most uh, wise and, uh, and, and experienced and who have done some of the biggest things. They did not uh, blindly persist uh, it, like forever on something that wasn't working. They knew how to understand what's happening in the market and when to sell something off and just be done with it or when to just quit something and move on to another project, or when to like totally reinvent their product and do things differently. Uh, these are some of the people uh, who have had the most success. They knew when it was time to move on, instead of just like always just, the thing is like, I used to run a business too, and I know what it feels like to always feel like it, you're so close. You're, you're, you're just, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's right there and you can, if you just try a little harder and just keep going a little more, you'll get there. Except uh, you might not. You bet that, that vision never goes away no matter what happens in the business. Um, and a lot of us are you know, kind of put on blinders and just follow that light until it's a little bit too late. Uh, I heard over and over when I ask questions about you know, what are some of the problems you've had to overcome or the challenges you've had with hiring and employees and, and bad clients and projects that didn't go well. Uh, I heard, essentially, like, my interpretation of the advice that I heard over and over is like, 
it, it all comes down to communicating, like communicating to the clients up front more about their expectations. That will solve a lot of problems down the road. And communicating expectations with employees and then sitting down with them after communicating what wasn't working. And like basically all those problems that are painful and awkward that we encounter with our businesses uh, are essentially solved at the end of the day by just better communication. Um, this community will really help you if you let it. And I heard this very much. So many people said something that if you really want to go far, the, what was is, what is the, 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 yeah, if you want to go fast, we'll go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Like an African proverb, a lot of people say, it's, it's a super good one. And I think that's totally true. So lean on this community, and it, it will help you. Almost everybody says I got uh, as much or more back from the community as I put into it. Uh, these are some of the things which are more beyond our control. These are things that people didn't say so much as what I interpreted and in looking at their story. Um, and I think this is the stuff that is good to keep in mind when we fall into that trap of like comparing ourselves to other people's stories. Some of them just got it at the right time. Not much you can do about that. They were just doing the right thing at the right time for the right people. And fortunately for them, WordPress took off. There are all these other people out there who made things for other platforms that didn't take off and they've forgotten about it and dropped it, but WordPress did explode. And some of those people who were there at the right time, they capitalized on it. Uh, all of them who were really successful had a lot of stories of failure. So this is something really important to keep in mind. If you look at somebody else who's similar to you and you think that they're more successful than you are and you're scratching your head and wondering why, well, this is important to keep in mind. All of those people uh, that I, I look at, like they're doing such great stuff right now. They're just rolling, and if their business is soaring, and they have made it. Uh, if you listen to them tell their story, they will go back to the times where they had nothing, it was terrible, they were at the bottom, and, uh, and they just, everything was, was failing, uh, and somehow they persisted nonetheless, and eventually, something worked. Uh, I worked with a guy called Pippin Williamson. Um, he has, uh, he's made a few plugins over the years. Uh, a grand total of like four of them have ever had any commercial success. And he's published probably more than 80 that are out in the wild being used by people. And those aren't necessarily failures, but it's, it's, it's a similar, it's just, uh, a way to remind us that like, not everything you make is going to explode, and it's important to just keep trying things. Uh, there were a lot of people that I talked to who are doing well, having a lot of success, and a lot of credit can be given to the situation that they fortunately found themselves in. Some had great partners, some had funding that they were able to work with, some had some kind of a financial cushion, which meant they could invest in this project that's earning no money for an extended period of time and still be okay. A lot of us never find ourselves in that situation. And so we don't have the opportunity to maybe build an equivalent uh, project. And that's too bad. Some people have had that privilege and, uh, and made the most of it. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. Uh, great partnerships are really important very consistently. Um, and almost all of them can be traced back to days like today where good relationships were formed at in-person events. And, uh, and of course, all of these people just really worked their butts off, you know, uh, staying up late, working on the weekends, sacrificing a lot of their social experiences. That was uh, a very recurring theme. Now, just to wrap up, I want to go over a few of my favorite points that I just think are worth an encore. Uh, the strategies that I've used to trick myself into uh, being consistent are really good, uh, like scheduling a go live time with a guest that is too uncomfortable for me to just cancel because I'm not in the mood. That works really well for me. So I think we need to learn a little more about ourselves and find creative strategies to trick ourselves into going into uh, consistency. Uh, what has worked in the past in WordPress, 
is it always going to continue working equally well? So it's not going to be an effective strategy for us to just uh, model our plan after what other people have done. Like I work on a product called Easy Digital Downloads, which is a pretty well established and popular plugin. And our business model has evolved over the years. And there are a lot of younger, smaller plugin companies who say things like, you know, we're trying out this because you know EDD used to do it or does do it. And I'll say, no, like we we that worked at the time, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, I recommend a different strategy that's we're changing as well. Um, so just be aware of the market changes. I think all of us uh, need to chip in and help in the diversity efforts. Uh, as I said before, this community is really special. This moment that you're in right now here at this event is something to really, really take advantage of. I strongly encourage you to um, get lunch with other people here and, and take the time to talk uh, with whoever you're next to. Uh, these moments are just like really impactful. And I can trace like so many of the great experiences that I had and the positive directions that my career has taken just to like days like today where I found myself talking to the right people and, and things I never predicted ended up happening. Uh, that kind of speaks for itself. If you're not successful as you would like to be, uh, I'm sure the reason is you just haven't failed enough times. Keep at it, you'll get there. Uh, and with this, uh, I think it's time for questions if anyone has any. Yes, sir? Yeah, I'm here. Do you have any tips for new interviewers or anything you, you learned early on or later that uh, particularly in terms of helping with something that's maybe difficult to interview? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll repeat the question. So your question was um, along the lines of wanting tips for interviewing people, uh, especially in cases where maybe someone is difficult to interview or just generally conducting a good interview, uh, like for, for recorded programs, I would imagine. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. We're not talking about job interviews. No, yeah. We're talking about peers in the industry. Yeah, you being the interviewer and the other person. Okay, I love this topic. I didn't care anything about it when I started the show, but now it's become a passion of mine. Interviewing people is something that I just, I love doing it. It's so much fun. It's a skill that I want to continue to develop. And I have so much respect for like the people who conduct great interviews that I listen to, like Terry Gross and Iron Blast and Joe Rogan and Mark Maron, all those people who just like have great shows and pull out the best stuff from their people. It doesn't hurt that they always get great people. Uh, on their shows, it's a privilege we might not always have, uh, but still they have skills and uh, are really good at just like extracting the, the good stories and making uh, making any interview worth watching and listening to. Uh, you want some tips? I think um, I've always had more success when I was more prepared. Uh, there's no question about that. So the more homework I did about my guests, the better I was able to take the conversation in a good direction. And maybe the more conversation I had in advance of the show, uh, that was really good too. Like just chatting with them at an event before, or just like signing on to do a technical system check before we go live for the show, and just small talk. Uh, the more uh, I can learn about them and interact with them, the more likely I was able, I would be uh, to guide, successfully guide the conversation in a good direction, and like pull out really interesting stories and find the uh, find the really compelling points in their story, as otherwise that can be really difficult to consistently do on the fly. Uh, sometimes I'll have a guest, you know, if I ask a, a question that's a little bit too open-ended and they go on a long spiel and I'm like, I have five, six questions in, the, in here, but uh, where do I even take this from now? Uh, that can be a difficult moment if you don't have a plan and uh, you haven't already uh, learned some of this information. Because uh, it's not that important for you to learn it uh, during the recording. You should probably know a lot of it already. Um, not all guests are equal in terms of what they're going to give you. I definitely have had guests who I ask maybe three questions in an hour, because they just got a lot to stick. Uh, and I have other guests 
and we give extremely short answers, and I'm reaching, and they're not giving me anything. Uh, I know what that's like on both sides, but that's, that's, that's fine in my case, because this is just a show about like, who these people are, with no, no real other objective. Uh, in my case, as I said, the purpose is really to just get to, get to know these people and what they care about and what they're trying to do. Uh, without a, a real goal, without like a, a, a point that we're trying to make in the end. That's different than a lot of other shows. Uh, a lot of shows, there might be uh, an emphasis here, like this is, a, this is a business strategy show and we're going to talk about how to increase our monthly recurring revenue and here we've got so-and-so who's an expert on the topic and such and such. Uh, if like you have an objective, that can really guide you and mold your questions around that. Uh, a lot of my guests I have found were much better if they had some questions in advance. They knew what was coming. And I always appreciate that too because I've been interviewed a number of, a number of times as well. And uh, the times where I knew a little bit about what was coming, I was better. I was a better guest. And I had a better story. The thing is stories are like some of the best content, but they're also like the hardest to come up with on the fly and tell them wow. I used to teach job interview skills with people, and um, there are those like situational type questions. Tell me about a time when, and those are some of the most valuable questions. Some of like the fastball down the middle opportunity for us to score and illustrate like how capable we are, and yet they're some of the hardest to answer on the fly uh, because we have to not only um, process like heavy computing power, like all our collective experiences to find one that fits the, answer to the question, uh, we also have to uh, tell it in a, in a clear way so that there's a, a logical progression to the story. Uh, so I think sharing questions in advance with your guests is a really good strategy. Those are just a few tips, but I think other questions are, and I'd love to talk with you more about it. Um, so what you said about how WordPress sort of is stuck in this situation where um, we're unable to sell plugins and and sort of like accessories and even services for as high as we are um, probably valued at, um, like compared to like SharePoint, which was we're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars for something, um, and then like if you take a look at other communities like the Drupal community, you don't sell things like plugins. Like that's completely un like unheard of. But then we have WordPress, which is sort of, you know, in between those two. And we have such a low barrier to entry for so many people. And so we're getting all levels of people creating plugins and services. So um, my question is, I agree that um, we've kind of gotten to this mindset where you're, you have a lot of people that are even thinking paying $10 for a plugin is too much. And they're like, no, I need a free one. So we're, our, our services and our products are valued, are, they're, they're, in people's minds they're valued so low. But what people are getting is actually worth a lot of money. So how do you, how do you think that maybe we can work towards solving that? Or are maybe trying to value our services and our our offerings at what they should be at, and kind of change that expectation of you know users and, and customers. Mm. Thanks for the great question, Jamie. Uh, Two minutes. <laughs> That's not a two-minute question. Uh, a, a very good one. I'll try to be as concise as possible because I think there's like two other questions. Um, it's, this is definitely a challenge. And one could argue that it's not as big a problem as those of us profiting from the success of WordPress make it to be. Uh, because it's, it's great for users to have, uh, like for, for uh, small business owners and weekend warriors and people trying to uh, do something special to have an opportunity to make something without a like, huge investment. Um, that's, that's the case with WordPress right now. And it's kind of cool that people have that opportunity. But at the same time, that makes it really hard for 
legitimate businesses to be sustainable in this space. And so what we have is this, this problem that eventually breaks down where in the, in, in the early days, it, it's kind of fine because there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of people are making um, and, and much of it's cheap uh, and it's pretty affordable to get started, but uh, a lot of that stuff can't be well sustained because it doesn't earn enough. And so these, these products are being sold for like, like once and not recurring or for low prices. And whoever's behind the products can't afford to like run a business on that. Maybe they didn't even intend to run a business, but it doesn't matter. Like they eventually abandon the product. Or, or maybe they don't have the resources to put in the product to actually make it really good. And so what we see eventually, it kind of breaks down because a lot of people are relying on either abandoned technologies or technologies that were not developed very well. We have quality issues and we have like security issues and performance issues and all these like problems because uh, the, those working in the industry and making the premium stuff uh, couldn't really uh, invest heavily in, into making it very much better. Because there wasn't enough money and there's not and it's not, there's not enough money for like outside companies with top talent and top resources to even uh, ever dream of diving into the WordPress space. Like, that would make no sense to them. Like, why would we jump into this space where, uh, you know, like we could obviously make amazing stuff. We've got the best people and all the resources in the world, but there's no return compared to where we're at elsewhere. And eventually, I like, guess years go by, uh, WordPress kind of like could can decay. Uh, and becomes less attractive to the platform. Like, well, that could go in a lot of directions, but I generally think that that's, that's kind of a problem. And we have to maybe paint a better picture, like why WordPress can be a high quality premium solution for people to use. It's really difficult and a long, a long discussion, but I know that should be a talk on its own, really. Yeah, thanks. Uh, do tw tw questions also like talk questions or like 30 second questions? <laughs>